Welcome back to another episode of Silent Powers Go to the Movies. This is another Throwback Thursday review, and today I will be reviewing the movie Virtuosity. And just a fair warning, there's going to be spoilers up ahead, so you've been warned. When a virtual reality simulation created using the personalities of multiple serial killers manages to escape into the real world, an ex-cop is tasked with stopping his reign of terror. So let's begin with my first pro. Well, this film, even for 1985, it was already taking on the AI concept and how it can be bad, which is kind of a hot topic nowadays. But here, Chad GPT is not very helpful. Instead, it's a killer that somehow comes into the real world. Think T-1000 mixed with ChatGPT full of killer profiles from Tinder. Out in the real world, playing hard to get with his ideal date, Denzel Washington. The movie is all running around and shooting, so action scenes basically. Some are interesting and some are kind of hard to understand, making you say how and why. But you do have Denzel Washington and Russell Crowe in the movie. Next pro. Even though this film came two years after Jurassic Park in terms of special effects, Jurassic Park did it better, but when you research more into it, this film did an amazing job using vector formulas versus Jurassic Park, which used bit mapping to formulate textures and images. Okay, how can I explain this in other words? It's like having a costume made by professionals versus Ridley Scott's crew making the alien queen out of a trash bag and random objects in a shop. Both made something, but one was more impressive with their use and techniques than the other in terms of behind the scenes story. But yes, when you see the final product on the screen, it's really bad. But they did put hard work into it. And yes, it didn't help that Jurassic Park raised the bars for special effects two years before. Next pro, because there are going to be more cons ahead. I would have to say this is Russell Crowe's first film before he was well known. Denzel, on the other hand, was already well known. But here we see it's their first film that both worked together. Later, they would work together again. And now on to my cons. Let's talk about the acting of Russell Crowe in this film. He was trying to be perky, giddy, but crazy at the same time. I take the perkiness and giddiness was an idea of a computer program image back in the day and then they wanted to add some crazy due to the killer's profiles that was Russell Crowe's character said but I really didn't like it why not give him a darker calm and smart persona think of Hannibal Lecter or a real serial killer since there are many profiles that have been documented with many of them having high IQs or charisma that even made some like Jeffrey Dahmer talk his way out when he was pulled over by a cop and going by that logic that the programmer gave Sid all these profiles to be created you would think that he was more of a smooth talker, calm, and super smart all in one. But we got a giddy laughing, cracking joke Sid. But honestly, I think this was not Russell Crowe's fault. Maybe it was just the script and how his character was written. I mean, Russell Crowe has had other good roles in his career. Next con. If the fault falls strictly on the script, then give it the death penalty. Because we have more evidence that the script was really bad. Really, there are so many bad things in here. One is the beginning. We started a simulation already, which is just having the audience jump into a world they don't understand, which they could have played on but they decided to give Denzel's character, Parker, a back history of being a cop whose life is ruined by one of Sid's many profiles. Well, here is the issue. They give you crumbs of his backstory and then you are supposed to care for this character just like that. You need to show us his backstory so when we see his family die, we make the connection and bond with the character as an audience. And from there on, we stick to the guy and have his back. But here is the issue. The movie, it doesn't feel like it wants to develop the story. Instead, it's just like a game where you are thrown in and said, go catch the bad guy and you skip all the cutscenes to the backstories. Oh, and yeah, you also skip the main tutorial. So that's the film. This movie is all about action, shootouts, and they skip the actual story development and keep the characters personal development to a small minimum. Next con, the ending. It was just not very well executed. First, let's walk through it. We have Parker chasing Sid to a building where he has taken over a TV station and then has Madison's daughter, Karen, as a hostage. Then Parker is about to kill Sid when Lindemeyer, the programmer of Sid program tells Parker that if he kills Sid, he's not going to find Madison's daughter. So next is where the film really messes up. First, Detective William, or Billy, allows the programmer to put Sid and Parker, oh, and also Madison, back into a VR program to try to fool Sid into telling them where they have the daughter. Okay, you might say that is a smart move, but you don't do this with just one detective around because by now we have established that the programmer is on the side of Sid because he ran away from the cops and he helped Sid escape the VR world. And also, why did you allow Madison to go into the program at all while the sensitivity levels were not disabled. At least have some random cops standing around, which you later could actually have the programmer just lock the room and lock them out. At least that part would be sort of a believable part. Also, when Sid is breaking Parker's mind with hyperstimulation in the VR in the last part, the sensitivity we see on the screen go above 700%, which we have established from the first scene in the film that humans cannot tolerate those levels. But don't worry, we have a super program 
programmer on it, Madison. Oh wait, she isn't a programmer. But then how does she get him out alive? Well, just simply unplug him. Heck, even the Matrix has warned you about that, that someone cannot survive being unplugged just like me. I don't unplug my computer without actually shutting it down first because I know better. Oh, and after Parker gets out, forget about the dead detective or the programmer and Sid, just skip to saving the daughter. And no one even cares about Sid anymore until he pops up back again in the form of a bomb program. And also, we have Madison still giving tips to Parker on how to go about disarming this bomb. At the end, we see Parker take Sid's program cube and throwing off the building versus just stepping on it and breaking it. But what did we expect from a film that just wanted action with some super complex special effect using vector formulas? I guess they just wanted to flex and also it didn't work because Jurassic Park overshadowed them by saying hold my beer two years before. So my final grade for this movie is going to be a three and a half out of ten. This film has so many bad things about it. Only one thing that is kind of interesting to talk about what they were able to achieve using vector calculations and using them in special effects was kind of impressive from a technical point of view but from an audience point of view Jurassic Park made it better and it was two years before. But as far as the story I have a better idea for the film. Why not have Denzel also be an AI program while Sid uses serial killer profiles? Why not have Denzel's program be based on cops or detectives who have caught said killers? Also making both actors act smart and sophisticated again think Hannibal Lecter as a killer and as for the cop think Sherlock Holmes mixed with a little bit of Spencer Reed from Criminal Minds as a base for that character. And then have them play cat and mouse throughout the film by chasing each other and setting traps. But even then I don't think this film would be worth saving or even watching unless you want to end up just like the Jackie Chan confused meme. So I really don't recommend this film unless you really want to see where Russell Crowe began. So that does it for this review of Virtuosity. Please join us next time where we're going to review Dead Presidents. Did you see that shit man? Man what the fuck wrong with you? See the way the fucking doors blew off? No motherfucker, you blew the whole motherfucking truck up motherfucker. Please like, comment, and subscribe. You can find our social media links below. And like always, keep watching movies.